All right, so what are we coming into here, Luis? We got Kyle Gibson and Brendan Winkleman. Elves versus Living End. This is kind of a showcase for modern. Kicks things off with Metal Sentinel. Not the worst start from Kyle Gibson's perspective. I think, you know, you'd be much more sad to see a mana producing elf at this point. But I see a Thought Seize, so we're, we're going to see Brennan get, you know, kick things off with a Thought Seize here. I could see an argument for Shriek Maw mm -hmm. if you're really concerned about uh, Kyle having a two mana play. But yeah, Anger of the Gods seems like the most likely option here. Whoa, he took Living End. That, oh, he's got Surgical. Oh, look at this. That's Surgical awesome. Extraction for Brennan Winkleman says, Remember that combo you wanted to do? Let's not do that. I think that I would be okay just waiting here. Like, I would I would not worry too much. I, I wouldn't be inclined to Shriek why Maw, are, though. Why are we Shriek mine? That's a strange no, that, that I don't like. And it looks like he says, well, look, if I'm going to try to start casting four drops, or excuse me, five drops next turn, I'm just going to anger now. Yeah, th but this is, this is why I didn't like killing the, the Nettle Sentinel before. Yeah. Because all that changed is you took two less damage, and I think Shriek Maw is worth more than that. Right. So if Brennan attacks with those two elves, I yeah, I, spring the trap here. I like yeah, killing your own Bloodstain Mire, perfect. So there's a Westvale Abbey, and he does actually have five mana available thanks to the Elvish Mystic Collective Brutality. And <laughs> Kyle's like, get rid of this and Luis. You know what's no? We're, we're gonna see that situation. <laughs> Demonic Dread is gonna make it so this Elvish Mystic can't block. Oh, he's got a oh. Scavenging News though. Scavenging News, no. It's not, not quite there. Duressing the Demonic Dread is actually critical because now you can make the Scavenging Ooze unable to block, but it can still, the, the, the Elvish Mystic can block the Beast. Scavenging Ooze puts Brennan up to up to six, and then you don't end up dying to the Shriek Maw. Wow. Brennan, depending on what he drew here, could oh, start to consider. That was a collected company. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Does he start attacking? Yes, yes look sure. at this. Scavenging Ooze gets in and forces the issue. And, you know, I, I, I think Kyle's misstep with the Shriek Mar earlier is going to cost him here. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, okay. So he's just going to jump block with the Beast. And Brendan's quite happy with that. Did Kyle just say go? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, wow. Well, here's Collected Company. Was that, that a Shaman of the Pack? Yeah, Shaman oh, of the Pack, yeah. Elvish Archdruid. Drain you for four. All my Elves now get plus one, plus one. That's got to just do it. That has to do it, yeah. Trans. Do it! Do it! Ormondal! It's probably not right to do it because there's no reason to lose to a beast within if you if you, like you sack five creatures. But I really want to see it happen. I did want to see it too, but no. All Brendan's right, going to make the it. correct play instead and get the job done here. So Brendan Winkleman wins two games, two one. Hardened Scales versus Grixis Shadow. I'm in for that. Francisco kind of <clears throat> walking the line here between finding answers for the threats on the other side eventually, or just producing his own awesome threats and, and kind of ignoring what's going on. Wow. Respect. Hmm. Dismember is going to hit the Arcbound Worker. That is going to strand that modular. Interesting. I mean, but boy. Francisco knows about the Steel Overseer at the least. Absolutely. Well, there's that Overseer. Boy, I, I hope Francisco has another answer for that thing. Gurmog Angler has hit the battlefield. So we were talking before about answering the other cards and, and uh, presenting threats for Francisco. Over the last turn cycle, he's actually been able to do both. Yeah, he also has Fatal Push and Stubborn Denial in hand. Animation module now from Jin. So I think, in a literal sense, he could put a counter on the Ravager. You get a 1-1 one, one if you... Pay one to get a Servo. Yeah. Sack the Servo. Sack all the stuff. But he's... Francisco's just going to Stubborn Denial the module, which makes sense. Attack for five, you're down to ten. Francisco? What does Francisco have? No idea, Huey. Well, 10-10 okay. is what Francisco has. No big has. deal. Whoa! Just added 15 to the power this turn. 15 power to the board this turn. That's pretty good. Hard and scale sitting on a land. Not a whole lot you can do here. Wow. Oh! Unreal. Unbelievable. Right off the top of the library. What a draw. All right, there's Michael Bernard on the left-hand side of your screen. Jacob Winkleman playing for top eight with Elves. Serum Visions now for Michael Bernard to kick things off on the other side of the battlefield on the play with, with Jacob Winkleman, and he has Heritage Druid. Pretty good turns here, though, for Jacob. You know, this go-wide strategy is working for him, and he's even got a scavenging use on the battlefield as well. So four mana, and here we go. Collected company shields well and truly down here for Michael Bernat, so he can just say, sure, yeah, you got it. And this is big. What can Jacob come up with from this Elves deck to try to put him one step closer to Not the much. top eight? And yeah, 
a Llanowar Elves, and an Elvish Mystic. It looks like the Sweeper hit, and now Jacob is rebuilding this board. Ooh, and that's a nice one there. Elvish Arch Druid, but a Thing in the Ice is holding it one of the creatures at bay, and a Lightning Bolt off the top for Bernat means that that Elvish Arch Druid doesn't really get to go off, and he'll just want to snap that thing off. And it looks like Michael Bernat is going to be able to uh, kind of give himself some inevitability here by continually attacking every turn with this Awoken Horror. And Jacob is just content to keep blocking yet another Faithless Looting. I'm talking about this card all weekend, and there it is. Two seven-powered lethal threats, and that's going to do it. Your top eight for Grand Prix Los Angeles at Magic Fest Los Angeles, brought to you by ChannelFireball.com 2019. Hashtag branding is number one, Bradley Yu. Jin Liu was number two. We also got to watch Jin on camera. Michael Burnett, who we just saw get in. Number four, Joseph Trojan. Gal Schlesinger is number five. Francisco Rodriguez, number six. Fernando Gonzalez is number seven. And in eighth place, Daniel Besterman. Michael Burnett, as you mentioned, playing against Frankie Rodriguez here. Is it Phoenix Grixis Shadow? We've already talked a fair bit about this matchup, Luis. So let's start kicking some goals. Here we see, it looks like a one-lander with opt. You, you know, if, if Frankie really wanted to get a cheeky, as I think you would say, yep. the, <laughs> you, he could take the opt and hope that uh, Michael Bernard does not hit a second land. And it looks like Frankie's actually going to go that direction. Yeah, I like it. Also, Michael Bernard no longer having to pay two life for that Steam Vents. Blood Moon also cutting off the fetch land and the fatal push line of play. All right, so Faithless Looting did not find any Phoenixes here, but Serum Visions lets Michael see a few more cards. In comes the Death Shadow here. Another Metamorphose now. There's Ooh. an Arclight Phoenix. Arclight Phoenix is a big one. So now we could actually be watching the end of the game this turn. Lightning Bolt being pointed at the dome. He's going to go down to six life. This quarterfinal may be wrapped up before your very eyes, my friends, in just a few moments as we see the third spell power out this Arclight Phoenix. Across it comes. It's chicken dinner for Rodriguez tonight, but he is not the winner. It is Michael Bernat with a Lightning Bolt to the dome wrapping up the quarterfinal. <laughs> Jay Trojan and Gal Schlesinger here. Trojan on Titan Shift and Hardened Scales Affinity. We'll see now what Schlesinger is up to in game number two with, hey, look at this. A Hardened Scales on turn one. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Look at this. A perfect start for, for Gal Schlesinger. He's put a, uh, a Hangerback Walker into play and now a, uh, a copy of Arcbound Ravager. It's going to be a nice one, especially oh, with all of the... Oh, look, this is just a kill. This it's is a dead? Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, my goodness. Arc I just want to say, Louise. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and, and I'm sorry for all the Riley fans out there, all three of you, that, you, you know, this match is going to get cut short by a turn three kill with Ink Moth Nexus. But that's incredible. <laughs> all right, we're underway here in the finals. Let's get this thing rolling. All right, players are taking a look at their openers. Let's see if we've got some keepers here. This could be the one that decides it. There's a Graft Digger's Cage from Gal. Oh yeah, a nice enabling of Mox Opal, by the way. And Graft Digger's Cage not only prevents uh, the Phoenixes themselves from coming back, stops a flash, uh, Faithless Looting from getting flashed back. Sure. Oh wow, this is an explosive start. Mox Opal goes Wow, right. look at this. Six permanents on the battlefield on turn one. He's like, go. And wow. So, uh, Gal choosing not to play Arcbound Ravager there, uh, playing around, I, I guess, re removal from Michael Burnett. Ooh, Anger of the Gods. Oh, man, look at that. So punished for not playing Ravager there. Wow. Ravager could have eaten both Arcbound Workers and eaten the Mox and then made it so both the Hangerback Walker and the Ravager survive. Wow, what a beating. Now the Arc <coughs> Arcbound Ravager comes down, but is it going to be too late? Well, they're singing the ice again for Michael Burnett, and if he can get that thing transformed, it'll be very good for him. And he uh, hits a couple of cards Unfortunately in. for uh, Burnett, uh, the last card in Gal's hand is a dismember, so that, that thing in the ice is, is not going to be flipping this game. Well, it's very unlikely to. Still, Michael Burnett is uh, sitting on six cards in hand with already four lands in play, which is kind of a lot for the Phoenix deck. Yes, it really is. Thanks to Faithless Looting, the, the Phoenix deck does a good job of discarding excess lands. Oh, it's a braid. Likely choosing the destroy target artifact mode. <laughs> Indeed. So he's going to destroy the Arcbound Ravager, which... Ooh, and look at this. He's got the Lightning Bolt as well. And a Terramander. Wow, what a turn for Burnett. Terramander about to grow over here, by the way. Burnett's trying to figure out how to sequence things. But this is, this is at this point, Michael Burnett's game to lose. He's got tons of card advantage. Right now, we know Gal's uh, sitting on at least just a forest in hand. He kind of gives Burnett the, like, just hurry up and get it over with. Yeah, motion. come on, finish me off. That is going to be game, I think. 
Yeah, animation module's not going to be good here. In fact, all you can do is put another counter on Terramander. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Gal says, do you want to read it? <laughs> Michael Burnett. There we, there we go. go. <laughs> he made it to it. Out of boy, Gal. And that is Michael Burnett winning Grand Prix LA. Congratulations. 